I'm Danielle from Wendell Woodworks, and in my last video, I showed you how I paint and finish my MDF florals. In this video, I'm gonna actually walk you through how I cut and shape them. So these are my birthday bouquets, which means I just take the birth month flower of everyone in the family or just the kids and the grandkids and I combine them to make a representative bouquet. Because I don't consider my artistic skills to be amazing myself, I actually bought these files from Hannah Digital Designs. She's already done the hard work of drawing all the individual flowers and then I piece them together on Procreate, an app on the iPad. If you're not looking for specific birth month flowers, you can find really great flower designs on canva.com. I print my designs large scale on Adobe and I always print two of each template. And then I attach them to a one half inch MDF. I then start cutting with my favorite blade, the number five modified geometry blade from Pegasus. I start with the stems first and I cut them out as one big piece that I will shape the details into later with my Dremel. I then cut the flowers one by one, separating the larger petals, but I combine a lot of the small ones to avoid any teeny tiny pieces. I again can make all of these petals come to life with the Dremel or the rotary tool. I use the second template as a placekeeper to keep all of my pieces organized and to avoid having to number them. There is a whole world of rotary tools out there that I've never even used. I know Bear Wood sells the marathon rotary tool that some people swear by. I use a Dremel because it's what I have always had. So I'm just going to show you my personal preference. Don't be afraid to try something new. Use what you have and what's available to you. So let me run through what I use for shaping these flowers. I've had the Dremel 4300 for years and years. So when I wanted something to help me shaping, I decided to get the Dremel shaft, which is just a smaller, lightweight attachment that goes into the big and heavy Dremel. But when it comes to bits, there's a lot out there. This one is a Kutzel brand. Um, I have some other engraving ones and I've been over there, but if I had to choose just one out of all of them, my personal favorites are these little disc sanders. It's easy lock, so they're really easy to take on and off. And I feel like I can do just about everything I do with one of these and maybe one of the engraving bits just for the finer lines and detailing. So let's get to it. So starting with the stems, the general game plan here is look down at this bundle and see which stems are in the foreground and background. Because these leaves pop out, I'm gonna make a division here that shows that this one's kind of in the front. Oh, my pen's not working very well. And sand this down just a bit so it's um, behind it. And then this one is gonna be even in front of that. So there's gonna be a line here that kind of separates. Now this I don't really have to worry about because I'm gonna have some string, but I can kind of make a line with my disc sander that kind of shows just a bit of separation. Of course, I could also do that with paint, but it never hurts. Just to take the sander in and kind of create that curve here. So we're gonna round all of the edges really good, round them out to make them look more like stems. You can see from my video just how much dust is flying everywhere from this MDF, so it's really important to wear a mask when you're shaping. What I like about the disc sander is that it allows me to get the edges well, especially in those tight spaces. And not only will it sand down, but when you turn it sideways, you can use it to create the lines that you want as well. So on the leaves, instead of changing to an engraving bit, which I do on occasion, I can just stick with the sanding disc and it creates those lines and keeps them sanded and smooth at the same time. Kind of killing two birds with one stone here. So since I recorded that in real time, I know that that took me 15 minutes to do the edges and to do these lines with the disc sander. I'm sure I explained a lot of that on the voiceover. Um, because this was 60 grit, I wanna go over it now. I'm just gonna go over and hand sand this with a higher grit just to smooth it out in places where you can kind of see. This doesn't take long at all. It just kind of gives it an extra smooth finish um, around the edges and inside and maybe just over the top where I wanna smooth it out just a bit more and decide if there's any more detail that I need to add that I haven't yet added. And now we move to the fun part, the petals. So when I take a petal, you really wanna think about how a petal looks in nature. They're not just flat, they curve out. They start in the center and then they get big. 
So the edges here are gonna stay at their full thickness and I'm gonna take the disc sander, you can also use a drum sander or whatever bit that you want and you really just wanna cut this down um, to be much more shallow and then to kind of gradually come back up. So we're gonna do that first. We're gonna cut off a lot of the extra excess over here on the inside edges. And then I'm gonna create lines similar to this to make the petal look like it's curving as well. And that's really easy with the disc sander because it's already curved. So you can really just lay it on there. You get those nice round lines in the correct direction. And we'll just take one petal at a time here. So you get the idea. So far I've only used this one disc sander and it's still in pretty good shape because it's a 60 grit so it'll last a while. Now sometimes you might want to use like a thicker bit to take off more excess if you want to go even more extreme and then you can finish with the sanding bit afterwards to make it more smooth. I like using this one on the petals because when you go up like this I feel like it kind of gives it just more of a natural petal look anyway. It kind of creates these lines that look natural to a petal and so hopefully you saw how I also created those lines for that petal and I will do that for all the pieces. It's time consuming but really worth it in the end. Now I'm going to show you a petal done in real time in case that's helpful to see. Just remember that this is art, which means there's no right way or wrong way to do this. And depending on your personality, that could be a good thing or a bad thing. But I say this just to take the pressure off. It doesn't have to look like this or any other thing that you've seen before. You can find your own style here and hopefully have fun with it. Though I usually just use a template as a guideline, sometimes it's helpful to draw on the petals to better help give you direction. So now that my flowers are all shaped up, it's time to prime them and finish them so they look like this bouquet over here. And if you want to check out that tutorial, you can find it right here. Thanks for watching and like always, happy creating!